I never did any art history. I was meant to go to Elam School of Fine Arts, but my dad was there and all of his mates, and I couldn't think of going there with all of his friends. <laughs> Kia ora everyone, my name is Indiva Kuma and I study a Bachelor of Arts and Commerce majoring in Criminology, Sociology, Marketing and Management. So today we are here to discuss a very important issue in Aotearoa which is New Zealanders and their identity. Kia ora Indy, my name's Kathy, Kathy Smiths and I teach politics and international relations. You might be able to tell I'm not from around here, this accent, but I've lived here for about 16 years and I love teaching politics and I'm looking forward to telling you about it. Thank you. Kia I'm uh, Nick Thompson, I teach in the uh, Theological and Religious Studies program and I've been living in Auckland for about 12 years but originally I'm from Dunedin. Choice, thank you. Kia ora Indi, ko ngāri no Alice tōku ingwa no ngā pohi no ngā shipurawa hau. Hello everyone, I am, my name is Ngāri no Alice, I teach in Art History and Museums and Cultural Heritage and I absolutely love it. Awesome. Mm. Sweet as thank you so much for introducing yourself. So, coming back to that topic we're talking about today, I just wanted to talk about how what you teach, um, how does it get students to explore New Zealanders and their identity, and why do you think that it is so important for students to actually explore that topic? So, would anybody like to kick that off? Maybe I'll pass it off to you first, Nick. Okay, well, um, I think... It, it People coming to New Zealand for the first time, and even people who've grown up in New Zealand, um, could be forgiven for thinking that um, we're not a particularly religious society. And, and in some ways, by international standards, we're not. Mm -hmm. um, but if I go out like to the supermarket or shopping in Newland, where I live, um, like one of the places I go to buy vegetables, I can get vegetables, but I can also get halal meat, and mm -hmm. then there's shelves and shelves with uh, lots of little Hindu religious images. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of people using that that shop coming and going, and they'll sell special foods at Ramadan and, and so on. And I think a lot of our, a lot of the students who come to do our courses, they're not, they, they have no religious background at all, maybe mm -hmm. a third to a half of them. Um, but they're aware of that kind of thing going on all yeah, around them. There are just these little hints of religion and they, they want to make sense of it because they understand that they've, they're living alongside um, people for whom this is important. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they want to be able to deal with that in a kind of, um, I guess, culturally literate way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Can I maybe ask you to jump in on that, Kathy? Because I feel like there could be a bit of a relationship behind the theological be um, identity of Aotearoa and also the political identity that we get. Sure, that's really interesting, yeah. I mean, there's lots of different ways we can think about this issue of identity, but in politics, one of the things that we do is we, well, we do two things, really. First of all, we think about the public world mm -hmm. right, and how different groups and different identities relate to each other in the public world. And you might think, oh, yeah, elections, parties, all that, and that's part of it. But there's so much else that goes on in, um, in our public life together that involves our sense of who we are as New Zealanders, but also as members of the particular groups, of religious groups, like Nick said, but also of um, cultural, ethnic groups, uh, gender-related, sexuality-related groups. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And also from poli a politics point of view, what we're interested in is power. So we're interested in the way in which um, our sense of who we are as members of groups and citizens is related to power relations and power structures in society. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And back to you, Nārino. I wanted to talk about how art history, especially in Aotearoa, it's become such a massive thing as part of our identity, especially in youth. So how do you think that that would influence a lot of our students in the way that they view their identity in Aotearoa? Well, coming into university, often you'll think, where do I fit? Mm -hmm. And how can I do courses that might align with where I'm from and my background? Mm -hmm. So. For, within art history we have students from a wide range of backgrounds and identity is a key theme in both of our stage one papers and it's about who we are. Um, for me I probably wouldn't identify as a New Zealander, I would identify as someone from Ngāpui and Ngāchipuro mm -hmm. and Absolutely. that's really important to try and um, understand that the students who come in for those students who are watching, that that is what we want people to bring to come into university, mm -hmm. to not leave that at the back, on the, on the side and say, well, this is a, a different type of person in terms of your identity coming in. Mm -hmm. 
The University of Auckland welcomes a wide range of students and encourages them to feel like they belong. In Aotearoa I feel like my identity is a bit mushy and a bit weird because it doesn't necessarily belong here in a sense sometimes. Um, where in Korea I'm not necessarily a Korean, where in Fiji I'm not necessarily Fiji Indian or Fijian, right? So I'm interested to see how is it when your courses do you feel like some students that, especially from overseas or have ethnic backgrounds that come not typically Māori or Pākehā, interact with your courses in the way that they view their identity and the subjects that you teach? Well, it probably depends on the um, on the subject. Um, I mean, in all politics courses, we're always interested, as part of being interested in the public sphere and public life, we're always interested in what how different groups of people see the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and how we see the world here in New Zealand and how that relates then, of course, to New Zealand's relations overseas. So mm -hmm. there's also foreign policy and international relations. Um, so everybody brings their own experience and that kind of interacts with the ideas that we teach and we talk about. And we all in the classroom and that, or in the lecture theater, and that includes students and also lecturers, we all benefit from these different kinds of perspectives. Mm -hmm. That's what grows Absolutely. what it is that we teach. Yeah. So it's a very dynamic process. Mm. Awesome. Can I get you to jump in on that? Yeah, I mean, so I, I think r religious identities are not fixed. I think p people who are not part of them maybe think they're very kind of, there's something that people cling on to and mm. don't want to change. Mm. But in fact, they're incredibly fluid and so, um, we have, a lot, we have a lot of students who are in diasporic communities in New Zealand and their parents brought one kind of religion with them and then the kids are trying to work out how much of that they keep on and, and how much of that they accommodate to their friends and yeah. the, re the rest of society. Yeah. So like an example at the moment, uh, we've got a student um, who I, I won't say so, sort of say much about the specifics, but comes from a, a long a, a culture with a millennia long tradition of tattooing, yeah. and which he sort of admires and respects, and yet the church he belongs to will uh, exclude people who get tattoos, mm -hmm. and he wants to do a project sort of working through all the dimensions of that mm -hmm. that question, both the religious and the historical and uh, and the, the artistic. Kathy, if you could jump in on this, because I know you mentioned something about how you look at power specifically and power relations. How do you think that also plays out in terms of those tensions that exist between our identities? Um, well, it does definitely relate, of course, because all of our identities are sort of related to the power structures that exist in society. But I think what coming to university and studying, well, let me put in a plug for politics, what studying politics can do is there's two things really. On a personal level, it gives you confidence. And really studying any course in the arts faculty would do that because mm -hmm. you're speaking to all these other people, you're making arguments in eventually, not in first year, don't worry, but eventually you'll be making <laughs> arguments in public, in class, right? And you'll be learning how to do that. So you'll find out about yourself because that's what happens when you come to university. There are mm -hmm. so many different people with different perspectives that you didn't, uh, you didn't know about. But there's also always that, that one philosopher called it the aha moment where you suddenly realize that's how the world works mm -hmm. right you yeah, know and yeah. that's one of the things that um, we, we I'm sure we offer in all the disciplines but I know in politics is that we can show to students this is how things are sort of going on out there right mm -hmm. you know these are the power structures that exist and this might explain why you've had the experiences mm -hmm. that you've had right the aha that's how things work Mm -hmm. So we can we offer that in arts. What can students look forward to in terms of your disciplines when they come and study? So politics, probably like a lot of fields, has got some subfields, subdisciplines, and mm -hmm. my advice is always take a, as broad a perspective as you can, take as many papers with doing as broad a, a scope as you can. So, but just very generally, uh, we cover international politics. Mm -hmm. We cover political ideas, which is my own field, right? So I really would like to, I'd love to encourage that. International politics, political ideas, and New Zealand politics. Those are our three first year papers. Mm -hmm. And those give you the grounding, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the thing to do is to take a couple of those, and then as you get up, then you can broaden a little bit more. You're looking at, say, the history of political ideas, contemporary ideas about multiculturalism, pluralism, liberalism, these things, um, security issues, um, conflict, terrorism, um, more of the details about how New Zealand politics works. Mm -hmm. As you go up through the degree, then there's, the courses get more sort of specific and general, or, yeah, more specific. Um, but you start off with the first year foundation in those three fields, and, and you can choose from them. Mm -hmm. International politics, political ideas, and New Zealand politics. Mm -hmm. And that's a good overall scope. 
Okay, so with uh, theological and religious studies, you can come in through two first year papers. One's uh, Islam in the Contemporary World, and uh, there's another called The Bible and Popular Culture, which looks at the way that biblical themes pop up in all kinds of unexpected places in movies and TV and music and that kind of thing. Um, and the big classes and students, uh, a lot of students uh, kind of get the religion bug from them. They didn't mm -hmm. come to university meaning to study religion and then they come into our program. Through those at stage two, uh, I teach a course on religion in New Zealand and we, we, we go out and visit, uh, for example, we've gone and visited uh, an LGBT Christian church and a, a Buddhist community and a couple of local mosques uh, and students get to do a kind of research project on those. The idea is to kind of present them with religion as an actual lived reality rather than something on a Wikipedia page or in a, in a journal, <laughs> journal article. Very true. And then um, by the time they get to stage three, they can pick up these kind of individual projects that I was talking about um, before. Last time I had a student who was really into club music and the way that club music manipulated people's emotions and he then went and looked at big Pentecostal mega churches and the way that the music there in his view and he did made a very good case for this was actually structured in such a way to kind of raise and lower the emotional pitch of the service he did a brilliant uh, mm -hmm research project on that. Well in Art History we have uh, next year we'll have six lecturers and everyone covers pretty much the world and so um, we have two stage ones which are very a general entry if you've never done any art history before at school we encourage you to just try it out I never did any art history I was meant to go to Elam School of Fine Arts but my dad was there and all of his mates and I couldn't think of going there with all of his <laughs> friends so my mum said why don't you try art history we actually yeah so um, we have two general stage ones and then you can specialize um, we have classes in photography in Pacific art and Māori art and museum studies and Renaissance Baroque um, have I left anyone out and a very broad range and and in each of those you can study a particular location so for example the Renaissance classes you'll look at um, Europe focusing on, on Europe and the Pacific art papers which you can do right from stage two right up to honours um, you will be going out into galleries um, you'll be going into the museum and that's what we encourage kind of time outside the classroom and so with my classes or every class pretty much whether it's a gender class an art crime a Maori art or a museum studies we're down in the whare mm. and that's really important to reinforce that the university is all about our Maori um, the way that I teach the courses and for students to get some sense of the world around them that art is all around them and in each of the courses we encourage them to think about what's happening right now and how can they kind of think about that reflect that through the courses that they're doing. Now that students have to do a double major under the Bachelor of Arts, what are some other majors you think would pair well with your discipline? The thing about religion is that religion is in everything and everything is in religion, so it's an inherently multidisciplinary kind of topic. So it will go with theoretically anything. We, we've had students doing um, maths and religious studies, uh, and but, but I think more traditionally it will go with uh, things like we, we've got a paper on the sociology of religion and that would work well with a major in sociology, mm -hmm. uh, history, um, history of art, um, uh, classics mm -hmm. too. Uh, but yeah, you can literally combine it with anything and do so r really kind of productively. Mm -hmm. Art history goes aligns with a number of different disciplines. It really depends on what your passion is. And coming into university, we don't expect you to have mapped out every single course until the third year. But within art history, we've had students who got, have from English, from history, from archaeology and anthropology, Maori and Maori studies, Pacific studies. So it depends on your angle that you really want to think about and, and shape. Well, from a politics point of view, that goes pretty well with history, if you have an interest in history. Also, if you have an interest in kind of the social world, sociology, uh, criminology, those go well. Mm -hmm. um, also philosophy, if you have an interest in ideas. Just one very quick thing, in your first year, you've got to do your majors, but take as many subjects as you can, because mm -hmm. find out what it's like, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. This is a big okay. chance to try all these different things, so give that a go. Mm -hmm.
So we're gonna wrap it up there for today. So thank you so much for coming along and discussing with me such topics. Um, and thank you for everyone for listening in. And we really hope that this video will help you kind of figure out what you wanna do at the University of Auckland. Thanks.